So introduction to derivatives. So we look at uh, the definition of derivatives. The derivative itself is merely a contract between two or more parties that can be traded in the market. Now, I think a couple of points to be noted out here. One is, uh, let me activate the marker. So, well, derivative is a contract. So you clearly see that it's a contract. That means it can be legally enforced and it's between two parties and it can be traded in the market. Now that can be traded in the market. So you could have derivative agreements or contracts which could be traded in the market. And of course, we would see another category of derivatives which would clearly between two parties. At times, it could be endorsed to a third party. At times, it needs to be unwinded between the two parties itself. Future contracts, forward contracts, options and swaps are the most common types of derivatives. So clearly these are the kinds that are included in your syllabus and we would look at them in detail going forward. Now let's understand what a derivative is. It being a contract, the value of the contract would be derived from the underlying asset. So derivative clearly by itself doesn't create value, but it derives its value from an underlying asset. Now the underlying asset could be a stock, it could be a bond, or it could be uh, an index, or it could be a currency, or for that matter, interest rate. So it could be a variable, or it could be an asset, which will assume a varying value. The most common underlying assets are stocks, bonds, commodities, currencies, interest rates, and market indices. Now, uh, so I think few key points that you need to remember with respect to derivatives. One, it's a contract between two parties. Two, you could have derivatives which are traded in the exchange, or you could have two, uh, you could have derivatives which is clearly a contract which is between the two parties. It's an agreement between the two party, but it's not getting traded in the exchange. Now, the types, I think going forward, we look at it. The, 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 the important point to remember is derivative by itself is not an asset, but it derives its value from the underlying asset. And the underlying asset could be in the form of stock, bonds, currencies, interest rate, or market indices. Do remember interest rate in itself is not an asset, but is a variable which in turn could help uh, construct uh, a derivative uh, instrument and the derivative instrument would, would assume a value uh, by way of some functionality of the interest rate. Uh, going forward, just to give you a sense, going forward we would look at derivatives like forward rate agreement. Now that's clearly a derivative which is based on interest rate. It would assume value depending upon what the interest rate is on the day of settlement of derivative. Also remember guys, that derivative by itself will have a limited life, a finite life. There will be an expiry period for derivatives. Unlike an asset, which could be, which, 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 which could be something like an equity, which doesn't really have a maturity life, a derivative by itself will always have a maturity life. There'll always be a date, a day of settlement uh, decided in advance. Thank you.